Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about the new features in Review 20.2. We can find the release notes for this new version of Review by going to the Help dropdown and clicking on Learn What's New. It'll open up a new tab within the program itself, and this is actually a web tab. Here's our address bar. To use Review as a web browser, we can go to the Window dropdown and click on the Web tab icon right here. Let's scroll down and see what's new with Review 20.2. When we calibrate our page, or if we set a custom preset scale, we can now save those custom scales to our list of already existing preset scales. That way we can use them in the future without having to input them over and over again. We can also set independent scales for our X and Y axis if we need to. This also works with viewports. Let's take a look in the program and see exactly how all of this works. First, we'll go to our measurements panel, and here we're going to calibrate our page. That way we can see what's new with the entire process. So we're going to use this dimension that's in between grid lines four and five right here. I'm going to click at this intersection. I need to make sure that the grips turn blue. That way I'm at the correct intersection. Now review is going to ask me what is the length of this dimension, but before we get into it, we can see that we have this new button right here, add preset. So let's do it now. We're going to change this to 30 feet. After all, we just measured a 30 foot dimension. The number on the left was automatically created based on our calibration. And let's say that we wanted to use this for the future. So we can click on add preset. Now it is there. So we can immediately go to our presets right here. And then we can click on this drop down. And there it is. We have this new area. It's divided by a divider line. And we can quickly delete that preset if we wanted to or if we made a mistake. And then the other typical scales are still found down here. So we can add as many presets as we want to the top of our list, and we'll still have the rest of our scales available to us. This is a great way to use any kind of scale and to add certain scales that you use that are not typical into your presets. And if we wanted to, we can click on separate Y scale right here. This will open up a, another set of scales that essentially splits the X scale and the Y scale from the overall scale. So that way I could have my Y scale set to, for example, a quarter of an inch equals a foot, and I could have my X scale set to one eighth of an inch equals a foot if I really wanted to. Let's go back to our release notes and let's see what else is new with review 20.2. Each of our individual length measurements now have their own units that you can assign to them, and they're no longer connected to our page scale. Let me demonstrate this now. I'm going to make two length measurements, so I'll draw the first one right here. I'm going to draw it perfectly horizontal by holding the shift key. And I'm going to do the same for this length measurement. All right, we have two different length measurements. Let's take this one and let's see this new bar up here and we have this units drop down. We can click on it and now we can change our units from feet and inches to, for example, yards. And there we go. Now we have the abbreviation and the units themselves have changed. Let's test it on our next length measurement by going to the units drop down one more time. And let's change it this time to a metric unit. Why don't we make it meters? And there we are, 3.66 meters. So we can easily convert our units and our measurements into other units if we need to very quickly. Meanwhile, we haven't touched the page scale and the pages units themselves are the same. We can see here, in our measurements panel that it still says feet and inches for this length measurement in particular. So if I click away from it, it goes back to saying measurement properties and we don't see that anymore. If I click on this length measurement, it'll also still say feet and inches here and we have its own units from this drop down right up here. So it's actually quite useful and we don't have to worry about having all of our length measurements use the same units anymore. Let's go back to our release notes and let's see what else is new with this version of review. Here we have a link to Bluebeam University and we can find it under the help dropdown right here. And here's the link. Bluebeam University is Bluebeam's automated training software and you can log in and train at your own pace with them. We also have some updates to our plugins. We can now use SketchUp 2021's Bluebeam plugin. That should work out quite nicely. And Bluebeam has improved the installation of SharePoint. We also have several bug fixes that I'm not going to go into detail, but the release notes allow us to see these bug fixes and learn more about them right here. 
Thank you very much for watching this video on the new features of Review 20.2. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.